Welcome back all, this is Daz from Mudaro Techniques. So up this week I'm going to look at making a simulation for thunder and lightning. So the little piece so the little piece of tech I'm looking at using is the, the DYHV20T, which is little MP3 module. So the beauty of this little guy is, and I'll go through this in the video, is we can control it via IO pins, which means we can use a sketch within Arduino to turn it on and off and in synchronization or a slight delay with a simulation of the lightning, which I'm going to use NeoPixels for that. So you're probably wondering why am I not using the, the MP3 TF16P, I think it is. Now this little module, I've had basically no luck with it over the time and I've done lots and lots of research on it. Out of the probably the 10 or so that I've got that I've bought over the years, I reckon I've had one that's worked and that's on another another project right now, which is a crossing bill one. So the issue I've had with it, but what I can see the little chip set on the back of them, um, because these probably more than likely are clones um, that have been made, um, just don't like the types of sketches and that that I'm using. I just can't get to work them. Use this little guy first up, bang, it works straight away. Yes, the, pr the price comparison between these two are a little bit different, but hey, I'm willing to go with that with a better sound and I'll go through why it's a better sound in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Start of the show here is the little MP3 player as on the screen here. So this is what they call it a DYHV20T. So it comes in a few different varieties, and I'll go through the two that I've got here. So in short, they're saying that's an intelligent voice module um, that can be which integrates I/O pins, um, triggering, um, UART serial port control, which is what we're going to use to do, and one-line single bus serial port control. Um, please comment below if you know what that uh, that last one actually means, but we're going to concentrate on the UART, and they're all controlled via these little um, these little dip switches here. So the beauty of this little guy, it's got an onboard a 20 watt Class D amplifier circuit. Now it's got, as I'd explain, there's two ways you can you can either plug it on an output three and a half mil jack that goes to uh, some sort of speaker, larger speaker for better quality or a bit more volume. Or you can just use a little um, little speaker that plugs into to this output here. Probably the beauty of this guy as well here, it's got uh, the TF card, the SD memory card for, for us laymans like myself. And it supports up to a 32 gig, gig version of that. The beauty of this little guy also is there's, so it's got what they, they're calling intelligent um, voice, voice playback. So depending on, as I said, how you've set the dip switches here, and also the pins down the side here can be used for for different functions so if you're over as i'm going to use mine on a model railway or railroad um, you can actually set it up with the correct configuration of the dip switches here and what it then does is you just push to pull to ground each one of these and you can control up to eight individual tracks via say a push button and I won't go into it too much, but obviously the, the online control has seven different modes and you can play up to 255 tracks um, with the configuration of these pins, but I won't go into that obviously today. So what we're gonna look at is the, the UART mode or UART control with the, the dip switch configuration on number three is on, which is gonna use the, the transmit and also the transmit and receive pins via the Uno, sorry, the Arduino Uno, which will control it on and off. So also what we're gonna add is that next level into, so this second to bottom pin here is what they call the busy pin. So what we're gonna be able to find out is when there's a track playing, we'll be able to know when this, this player is what we call in busy mode or idle mode. So idle mode, nothing's played. Busy mode is when a track is actually playing. And if you're just using it, um, as push button say on a fascia to bring in some some funiculars or some little sound effects on your layout you can power it up here with a the dc um, input power input uh, from between 6 and 35 volts i think it is 
um, and then you can obviously have your, your push buttons and you can have an independent uh, volume control which is in the middle there so that'll um, dictate what the input is or sorry the output of the volume. PCB Way offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining in a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. Then select your material, finish and other post-processing customization like PCB assembly where all the components are added. If you are new to PCBs, their professional review team will review your file and notify you once they are good to be manufactured. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. All right, so what we'll quickly look at here is the, the connections. So over this side here, we've got the negative and positive DC. That's uh, my bench top uh, power supply that's going to the MP3 player um, on the input side of that. So from that, we've got the, the NeoPixel LEDs along the bottom here, and they're going to go to Arduino pins 5 volt and ground, and they're going to get on their control pin, we are going to pin number uh, pin number six and the io pins or the the rx and the tx for the mp3 player so the rx is going to go to pin number 10 and the the transmit or the tx pin on the mp3 is going to go to pin number 11 so on the on the back side here the beauty of these mp3s as i've explained is they do have a nice 20 watt amplifier so i'm going to use that so it's a three and a half millimeter jack out to a, a speaker just off off screen here the arduino is going to be powered up via the the usb here so obviously you can use the the vi in and the ground uh, on this side to bring in five volts and power it up that way and i will do that out in the layout Right, so here's the, the copy of the sketch here. So we've got the software as serial. That's purely for my debugging side of things and that a free NeoPixel. So that's obviously helps us control the NeoPixels. Now, there's no library as such for the MP3 player. That's all done by uh, commands, which you can find on the, the product, um, product, um, product sheet for the MP3 player. I won't go into to that too much um, in this. So... Obviously, we need to find all our pins at the top here for the LEDs. You pick the number of LEDs at this point in time. So I've only got 16, so two lots of eight. Once I get out into the real world or up into the layout, I'll probably put uh, three or 400 LEDs around the layout. So you just change that number accordingly. And also the transmit and the receive pins. So that's probably all I'm going to do at this point in time. So... One other thing that we within the play you can set the volume to which is a bit over half volume, I think. I think it goes up to about volume number 30. So we're going to go 17 there, so it's not too bad. But obviously you can play that with that with the, the onboard trim pot on the MP3 player. Alright, so we've got the simulator lightning between 0.2 of a second up to a second. That's the delay. So 200 milliseconds to a thousand milliseconds. That's the sort of the delays. But what we're actually looking for also is to check whether the MP3 player is busy. So if the MP3 so it'll fire off the the lightning and then the system will look for whether that busy pin, which is on pin number seven, is busy or idle. If it's busy, it won't play another sound. If it's idle, it will play um, one of the random five tracks that I've got on the SD mini card and further to the simulate lightning we're going to look at obviously because with the the neo pixels we can play around with the brightness so we've got different brightness levels um, that we're looking between 100 and 255 at this point in time I haven't really played around with the coloring I'm just using a sort of a white flash I might look at changing colors um, a bit later on which can be done down here as you can see strip color turn off the leds so that's where that would be done so the obviously the brightness is how close or how far away or it's trying to simulate how close or how far away the the lightning strike is and that's probably all we need to go through at this point in time um, so 
I won't go into it, but obviously there from there we compile the sketch and then we upload it to your Arduino or your Nano. You can you'd be able to use this same um, same sketch for any Arduino, um, whether it be Nano, um, Uno, or Mega. So what you're seeing here is the, the lightning going off there with the LEDs down the bottom and the the little serial screen there in Arduino is I wrote into the sketch. I just wanted to sort of do some debugging to see what was going on. I was having a lot of trouble with the randomness of the 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 files going off or the files being played from the MP3 player. So that's what I I'm still not all that happy with probably the, the timing of the, the lightning compared to when the, the sound's coming on, but it's obviously very much a work in progress. So thanks for watching, that's the end of the video. So like all videos, I have three questions. So we'll go with question number one. Is this the sort of Arduino sketch that you may use? Are you using something very similar? Number two, if there's any way I can make this better, please also comment in the comment section below. And number three, if there's any glaring areas that I've made, uh, particularly in explaining the sketch, please let me know and I'll write my wrongs the best of my ability. So if you also wanna reach out to me personally, I've got my email address in the email below. Um, I send out emails periodically to my email list. If you want to be a part of that, please email me and I'll put you onto the email list. Also, if you want to consider becoming a patron um, of the channel, every little bit counts towards to the, the cost of putting a YouTube channel together. And I thank those who have already, already dipped into their, their pockets and helped me out with my journey along the way. So, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.